I realize that this is what I do as well with other people who hurt me. I realize that this is what we do when others sin against us. We tend to hold on the sins committed against us. We hang on to our hurts. We brood over injury. It's such difficult for us to forgive. Sirach in the first reading says it best. Wrath and anger are hateful things. Yet the sinner hugs them tight. So true, isn't it? And we also don't forget, right? Our hearts, when we get hurt, our hearts remember the pain as well. And we recoil from loving. We recoil from forgiving. We hold back. We have reservations in giving ourselves to another person. You got burned once, right? You don't want to get burned again. But my dear friends, this is exactly what Jesus doesn't want us to do. We have to learn how to forgive. Not just once. Not just seven times as Peter suggested. No. Seventy-seven times. Which means infinitely, without limitations, without conditions. Jesus gave us the parable of the wicked servant. And so when the master heard about this, he summoned this wicked servant and condemned him. He was not condemned, by the way, for mishandling his money, his funds. No, he was already forgiven for that particular sin. He was condemned because he mishandled the master's mercy and love and forgiveness showed to him. My dear friends, God has forgiven us many, many times. There is no limit to God's forgiveness and mercy. And he will forgive us over and over and over again as long as we come to Him and seek His mercy. Our Lord will never get tired of forgiving us. God demands that we become forgiving people. God wants that we who experienced His mercy and His love and forgiveness will also show mercy and love and forgiveness to others. The first effect of forgiveness is healing. It heals our wounds. It restores us from our brokenness. It makes us whole again. And the best part is, it makes us free. It makes us free from the clutches, from the imprisonment of our anger, of our hurts. And it makes us free to love more deeply, to love more fully.